All right, we wanted to show you this one-tenth scale. We're gonna call it Legendary Grando, but it's definitely not spelled that way, but hopefully it's pronounced that way. This is a one-tenth scale, normally sells northwards of 300. It's on sale on Amazon right now for 195. The link is in the description, so go ahead and use it while supplies last, who knows. But you get a lot of RC for that price. We're just gonna run through some things and show you some things that we found. This is a ready to run RC out of the box. But again, we found some things that you should probably take care of before you start running it outside. We read the reviews, there were a lot of reviews on things breaking, but we think that a lot of that can be prevented through some preventive maintenance prior to running it hard. We'll take a look at the remote. It's a standard five channel remote. It's got your throttle. It's nice and smooth steering. Spring is responsive. You have a channel three light button, a channel four high and low shifter. That's your power button and the blue LED lights up there. This here is your winch control on the top. So this does come with a winch integrated. It's a, it's a nice controller, it feels good. You have your normal and reverse controls up top. Your steering trim, throttle trim, total steering and total throttle. And this does take four AA batteries in the bottom. So just your standard remote. Feels good. And here is the actual RC. This thing is pretty huge. Give you a size comparison to hands. So it's a one-tenth scale. We'll be looking around the outside here. Uh, just take a look at it. Up front here, you see we got the winch. This is a plastic bumper, plastic shackle, so uh, it feels good though, but it is plastic. It's got a winch up here. You got pretty big tires. They are foam filled and vented, but they are, the compound is not very sticky, so be aware of that. And then the body is not see-through here, it's just a standard plastic body. And on the back here as well, you have a plastic bumper with plastic shackles. Up top is gonna be your standard roof pins here that hold the body down. So we'll take the body off and we'll start looking at the inside. Actually, before we do that, we're gonna show you one of the things that we found right out of the RTR. The height is set too low on this body because the center of gravity is pretty high already. So maybe the manufacturer wanted, wanted it low like that, but if you lift up on the tire, it already starts doing body rub on the front and the back. So that could be an issue of tearing up the body. So that's one of the things that we're gonna do. We're gonna adjust the whole body up at the sacrifice of some center of gravity. But this pulls right off like any standard RC and it has a long enough cable to the roof rack lights that are up there. There are four little LEDs on the top. This thing will just unplug like that. And you can see, you can adjust the uh, post here, like most RCs. It does come with an 1800 milliamp hour battery, so you may get 30, 40 minutes out of it. Comes with some zip ties for some reason, uh, a set of mirrors, these things look like they'll break. It comes with a half amp charger, so it'll take about three hours to charge this battery. Always recommend getting a better charger. They say it's pretty waterproof, so we'll take a look at some of the things here. It does come with oil-filled shocks. You can hear them. And from the factory, they're all threaded about a quarter of the way down, so we want maximum travel, maximum flex. Um, we don't want it too tight. So we're gonna run these all the way back up to let that spring loosen up a little bit. I uh, don't know why the factory set that, but we feel like you'll get more travel like that. So that's your winch and your light control module. It's a 550 brush motor, pretty sure. We have a three kilogram gear shifter. This is your high and low shift here your gearbox, your battery tray and all that. 
in the front the steering servo is a 6 kg steering servo in the front so we'll flip it over to the bottom here and take a look these bars are aluminum but everything else is plastic drive shafts are plastic axles are plastic the shocks are obviously metal but the bumper the bumper supports that's all plastic under there it feels like a pretty good plastic so should last a while and that's that's really about it it's got a waterproof esc you can adjust the brake drag on it and everything right there there's some settings in there where you can move some of the pins around boat mode it's already set up in crawler mode so that when you let up off the throttle the rig just stops like that like there's brakes and you can actually hear the tires screech the winch is the wire is um, plastic coated and it's pretty long, about three feet maybe. So that's pretty good. It's a metal hook on there, but the whole housing is plastic. Everything's plastic. You got a heat sink on the ESC there. No heat sink on the motor. I'm sure you can get an aftermarket one. So really out the box, yeah, you can, you can run it. But people have said the axles break, there's some binding. We started up and we heard the differentials and they didn't sound 100% great. So we're gonna get one of them opened up and show you the inside. And it's probably where you should start first with. All right, we got the screws loose on the back pumpkin here. We're gonna pull the cover off. And as you can see, they got some wheel bearing grease in there, but it's not like a high EP or a Molly grease. And there's not much of it at all. It looks like peanut butter. So you never know how long these things are sitting for. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up the differentials and the gearbox. We're probably gonna remove all of this stuff and we're gonna pack it full of some actual real good grease. All right, we got done with everything. So basically we cleaned out all that peanut butter looking grease back there and we packed it full of some wheel bearing grease, extreme pressure. And if you see there, it started to come out the bearing there when we were running it right there in the back and same thing for our front. That's how we know that those Differentials are now packed full of grease and it's good to go. We also took the liberty of putting some hot glue around some of the openings here, getting some of the wires out of the way. Um, just making sure it's further waterproofed. We're gonna go ahead and put a piece of cheesecloth over this motor to protect it from any dust because we noticed the wheel will kick a lot of dust back here. And we raised the body and loosened up these shocks so they get maximum travel. It still does hit the body a little bit. We are a little concerned about that and are gonna get some rock sliders to protect underneath the body. But we'll get everything back together and get outside and run this thing and see how it does. All right, we got the Grando out here. We're gonna see if we can do this one-handed. That's low gear. Seems to do just fine. We'll put it in high gear. It's much faster. As you can see, it'll do wheelies. Oh. So it is pretty quick. All right, we're gonna get it over on some obstacles and see what it can All do. All right, we're gonna attempt to climb over some logs in low gear. Again, this is one-handed. Maybe too much for it. I just scratch up the side. First war wounds. So I can definitely get over some things. 
can definitely get over some things, but could use better shocks, some more height clearance, the body rubs still. But for a ready-to-run crawler for a sub $200 before taxes, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, we're asking for too much of it right now, trying to go over pallets. All right, we're going to attempt to climb these logs and see. Got a lot of rub on the fenders, so that's one of the things we're probably gonna have to change soon and trim down. Very top heavy, very top heavy. Could definitely use some better tires for sure and shocks. So we'll run it through some brush. Does really well in tall brush. Stuck on a little root there, a tree. Other than that, that does really, really well. Through the brush. No issues whatsoever. All right, now we're gonna ride this thing through the treacherous back. Again, this is one-handed. Or you wanna record? Get the little midget to help. Just keep it on the truck, yeah? Train seems like it's no problem for a 110 scale. Oh, 
Hopefully a wheel doesn't fall off like the last one. I don't think the wheel will fall off. Watch out for the stick. Come on, come this way. Let's see if we can get up. I know that this is all wet before. I doubt it can make it out. What if you just did that and like there was a pit under it and it just fell through? I don't and you never saw it again. Uh oh. Let's not do that. I hear something. Mm, struggling. How do you zoom this thing in? Duck. It's not. Looks like it. No, we're gonna go. No! Yeah! Hold on. That is stuck. You can't get it out. Up. No, we're stuck. Yeah. Oh, we got it. It's like a twirl weave behind it. Oh. Oh, there's a stick on it. Oh, we got it. No winch needed. It's up. And off we go. Don't come back down here. Ah, you're going to Still got some body rub happening. Those are things that are all gonna have to be corrected. Test the range and see how far it can go out. got quite the range it's a few hundred feet at least we're about a half hour into playing with it and it's still got tons of torque available as you can see it can flip itself over again all this is one-handed so it's not the best footage You see, you get some fender rubbing there, even with the slightest little inclines. Has good approach angles. Although we would, we would probably like to see some higher ground clearance because those plastic axles will get banged up. But again, still doing a fine job for sub $200 RTR. Take it out here on some loose gravel and see how it does. I 
We just got it in low gear, going nice and slow. Ooh, we definitely don't want to fall into that swamp water. So, I'm gonna get my foot there just in case. All right, we're gonna rescue it. Don't want it to fall in that nasty water. Back here through some thick brush. There's low gear, no problem. High gear, again, no problem. This thing really has no problem going anywhere. It is, again, top heavy, so for a crawler, probably gonna wanna start adding more weight down low. Get that center of gravity down, because this thing um, definitely has some rolling issues. But you see there, it goes right over things, no issues. And this is all one hand, so definitely with two hands would be better off. Coming high gear up here. It's coming up a hill. No real issues. Just does a phenomenal job through everything. Just to give you an idea how steep this hill really is. It goes all the way up. No problem. Uh, of course it would flip over at the top of the hill. Let's see if we can get it flipped back Some up. Some more right. thick up grass incline. No issues for it whatsoever. Right through it, no problem.
battery is starting to die down we're coming up on over an hour of play time so far not too bad for a 7.4 NICAD battery Yeah, battery's starting to die. That's in low gear, it's still doing it. Yep, battery's starting to die. And that's it. Battery is dead. We got one hour, just over an hour of playtime. Not bad. So we'll go inside and talk about this thing and see what we learned. Okay, we got about an hour runtime, just over an hour total runtime on this thing with the stock 1800 milliamp hour battery. We did use an aftermarket charger we have for it. We did not use a stock charger. The one that we have is better and checks all the cells and everything. So everything looked well. The only issues we had running this thing were obviously with the body rubbing up front here. And right over here. So you get a lot of body rub. We want to raise the body up a little bit. And so we ordered some new posts. So stay tuned for that. Another thing we noticed was right here, when you landed on something, it would crush it. So we definitely need to get some rock sliders in. That'll probably be the first upgrade we do. Other than that, nothing really broke. Well, nothing broke off at all. We didn't put the mirrors on because we thought those would break off. But the lights, everything from all the tumbling. We noticed that the bumpers are... The brackets are a little flimsy, they move around, so we might look into getting some better bumper brackets. One thing that did happen though, and it's not necessarily necessarily a deal breaker, is you see this bar back here? It's slightly bent in. So we're gonna try and bend it back out, and we're gonna email the company and see if we can get them to send us a rod. If not, we're gonna be looking into some steel ones maybe, or some custom ones, because these aluminum ones, they did get scratched up pretty good on the bottom. But as you can see, that one has a slight bend in it. Nothing catastrophic. The truck still drives straight. Everything is good. So for 195 bucks, don't think you can beat it. Get it while you still can because they're generally about $300 plus after shipping and taxes. So the link is in the description. Stay tuned for more updates and upgrades on this thing.